Let me just give you a personal example. If you had a fancy drug that halved your chances of dying from cancer, many a drug company would jump for joy. However, it's my reckoning that merely knowing something about cancer probably halves your chances of dying from it if you get it. And if you're sick and actually suffering from symptoms of cancer, having someone competent to do the background reading and advocate for you probably halves those chances again, simply because otherwise you are entirely reliant on whatever medical services you're depending on. And lastly, if you're relying on someone like the National Health Service in England, simply knowing how inordinately inefficient and bureaucratic the system can be probably halves your chances of dying again. Normally, life is so safe that you never have to face significant gambles with your own life. However, if you or someone you know has cancer, that time is over. I mean, let me just give you a kind of personal example. Let's just say you've, you've got something growing in your liver and it's a, a large, probably malignant tumour. And if left untreated, you might live anywhere between three months and maybe a year if you're lucky. Now, you've got to understand that cancers are basically rogue cells of that organ. So primary liver cancer is basically made up of messed up liver cells. And lung cancer is made from messed up lung cells. So let's make this a little worse. This growth in your liver is very close to the portal vein. The portal vein is what takes all of the nutrients from your guts to your liver, where it can be filtered and put into the regular bloodstream. And it also happens to run alongside the bile duct, which is what takes all of the crap that your liver's filtered out of the blood and then adds some enzymes and dumps that back into the digestive system. That is, the portal vein and the bile duct are absolutely necessary. You cannot live without either. So the prime line of dealing with cancer is to simply chop it out. But this is a big cancer and you're in your mid 70s and the chances are that even if you were young and healthy this would be a hard operation and if you survived it you would probably be in hospital for a couple of weeks especially seeing as old folks tend to heal at a slower pace than young ones ablation techniques really aren't on the table here because this is a big tumor and it's very close to some important stuff you see all ablation techniques basically kill off cancer tissue by burning it with either coal or heat or chemicals. That is, your body has to be able to survive that burn. And this is getting fairly big. That is, to successfully cook this runs the risk of destroying the portal vein or just killing you from the shock of actually cooking this large piece of tissue inside of you. Now, if you're going to cut out or burn a tumor, it really doesn't matter if it's cancer or not cancer or if it is a cancer what kind of cancer it is because if you're going to cut it out or burn it all tumors are the same but that's not true with chemotherapy you see cancer cells inherit the biochemistry of whatever cell it was when it went cancerous so you need this mm, sort of risky procedure called a biopsy which is where you take a sample of that growth and it can be quite dangerous because it does run the risk of spreading the cancer but it does mean that you can determine what kind of cell it is which is something that you're going to need to know if you're going to try and use chemotherapy you see just because a cancer is in one organ that doesn't mean that's where it started indeed most cancers found in the liver are usually spread cancers or metastases from other places in the body frequently in this case the bowel so you get the biopsy results back and they tell you that this tumor is not a primary liver cancer, but suggests maybe it's from either the bile system, the pancreas or the stomach. Even though there is no evidence of pancreas or stomach cancer on the PET scan. The PET scans, by the way, that's where you inject a radioactive glucose variant into people and cancers are growing so they suck up that glucose which means that when you run a scan on this, you can see the parts that are radioactive. That's where the tumors are growing. But on this PET scan, you can't see any other places where there are cancer in the body. And it turns out that's not uncommon. With about 10% of cancer cases, they never really work out what kind of cancer it actually was. And so comes the choice. At the moment, you're kind of fine. With very few symptoms, you feel mostly okay. And further, 
you know that you've been living with this cancer symptom free for about two to three years. But it now seems very likely that at some point in the next few months, you're going to become symptomatic and eventually die. But if you do nothing, you're guaranteed to enjoy those happy days when you're still healthy. Else, you could choose to gamble those symptom free days. They're guaranteed to be lost. But you can find some gung ho surgeon who is maybe willing to try this rather dangerous surgery that has a reasonable chance of killing you. But if you survive and the cancer hasn't already spread to somewhere else, but you just can't see it yet, there is a chance that you will maybe live a longer life. Else, you can go for the chemotherapy route. Now, in this situation, chemotherapy will not offer the potential of a cure. Indeed, it may even kill you, but it may also extend the time that you have left. But you're going to feel very bad while you're undergoing the chemotherapy treatment in those early days while you're otherwise symptom free. In many ways, this is the Kobe Ashi Maru test. It's how we face death and the death of others. Question is, what would you choose to do?